How cool is that? Right against the grass bed. So much fun. Like literally an inch. Oh, they fight so hard. I mean, this is September, end of September, and there's nobody here. We've got the whole river to ourselves. Now that is a fantastic rainbow trout. On a dry fly, all day, can't beat it. But it's fun head hunting like this because you can actually pick your fish, see it, pattern it, place a drag-free drift through with a dry fly, and maybe they'll come up and eat it. Honestly, this is one of my favorite views ever. Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. My name is Mark Melnick. We are in Yellowstone Teton territory. And you know, this region is famous for its big rivers, but think small creeks, gin clear water. They're here, think the big five, cutthroat, brown trout, hybrids, rainbows, and maybe a brook trout. This small stream adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. That's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing. Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Welcome to Yellowstone Teton Territory in Eastern Idaho. We are here exploring all that this unreal region has to offer. Things are a little bit different on this adventure as I will be exploring the area all from an RV. Consider this my own traveling fly fishing road trip. Yellowstone Teton territory is comprised of over 7,500 square miles as it spans from Island Park in the northern area of the territory south to Idaho Falls with many amazing destinations in between. We're here for the fishing, specifically the small rivers and creeks in the northern part of Yellowstone Teton Territory. This area is well known by anglers and adventurers for some of the finest trout rivers in the west. Rivers such as the Henry's Fork of the Snake River, the Teton River, the Snake River itself, to name a few. But we're here to go exploring in the area to find those rivers and creeks off the beaten path. We're on the hunt for the big five. Rainbow trout, brook trout, brown trout, cut bows, and of course, Idaho state fish, the cutthroat trout. It's fall time. The weather is cooling down, but the fish are still looking up, eating dry flies and terrestrials. We are fishing the area around Island Park, Idaho with access to Yellowstone National Park. It's important to note that if you're going to fish in the park, you need a day-use park fishing permit. And be sure to be up to date on park regulations as to where you're fishing. Many different rivers within the park boundaries have different regulations. After a short walk in, I accessed a stretch of river and got set to present a hopper dropper.
early morning on this river presents a decent caddis hatch. I arrive just after 10 a.m., and I seem to have missed it. I fished the rest of the morning without moving a single fish. Then, I noticed a new hatch was just starting to go off. Spruce moths were popping. I switched flies, tying on a white miller, size 14, and that was the trick. Now I've got a nine foot leader on here with three feet of 5X tippet. And that should get in their wheelhouse. They're feeding actively. Okay, there's a big fish there. How cool is that? Right against the grass bed. So much fun. Like literally an inch. It's a good fish. Nice rainbow. I think it's a rainbow. I want to keep them away from there because there's still fish feeding. Oh, they fight so hard. I mean, this is September, end of September, and there's nobody here. We've got the whole river to ourselves. Come on, bud. No, 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 no. Scoop. Nice. Let's take, ooh, a little fat guy. Now that is a fantastic rainbow trout. On a dry fly, all day, can't beat it. Let me show you the fly that's catching these trout. It's called a white miller. It's an imitation of a spruce moth, and it's about a size, you know, size 14, size 16. That's it. Just looks like an elk hair caddis with a white collar and a tan body. A little bit of floating. These fish are going crazy for it. All right, so on the business end of this rig, I've got a five weight, weight forward floating line with a 3X nine foot tapered leader. To that, I've got a stretch of three feet of 5X tied together with a triple surgeon's knot or a triple uni. And on the business end, nice dry fly. Is this guy? I thought it was a rainbow, but it may be a brown. It is brown trout. How cool is that? That's awesome. Brown trout on a little dry. I saw this fish eating up coming out of this little inflow creek. I decided to put a cast on it, and first cast I came out and ate. Look at that little brown trout. We were fishing a creek this morning and uh, there wasn't anything going on in the grass fields around it. And um, we decided that we'd, you know, fish the, fish the day and see what we could come up with. And as the day wore on, we started seeing more and more hoppers. So we decided to come to this other creek and just try our luck at strict fall hopper fishing. And right away, Nice little brown trout. Awesome stuff. What a great afternoon of fishing dry flies for rainbows and browns. Wild fish on dries. Absolutely perfect.
The next morning, I'm better prepared. I'm up early and decide to head back to the same creek in the park to try and catch the early morning caddis hatch. And it isn't long before I see success. So I put on a size 18 tan elk hair caddis and about four casts in, we're hooked up. Like a little brown trout. No, it's a rainbow, nice. Right in the neck. And it flies out. Great way to start the day. Catching these little dudes. Oh, he came off. <laughs> so on the far side of this river, there's a, a ledge and I'm seeing all kinds of heads poking up here. The caddis hatch is just about to go off. And um, again, with that size 18, this little dude came up and ate it. But it's fun head hunting like this because you can actually pick your fish, see it, pattern it, place it drag free drift through with a dry fly and maybe they'll come up and eat it. Get out of there, buddy. Sweet. That's so much fun. Good fish. Sight casting rainbows with dry flies. Marble's hook will just pop out. Flies already out. Just wonderful. Wild rainbows. Gotta love them. The cool thing is if you're watching these fish eat naturals, it's a really subtle take, almost like an emerger take. So watching your fly for any change or suck down or anything, you may not see the fish rise, but all of a sudden your fly just disappears. Really, really interesting. And you can't have any micro drag at all. It's gotta be completely dead drifted. Very nice. We saw that fish eating caddis on that inside bend. And uh, I switched flies again. Back to an 18, a small 18 uh, tan. First cast, this guy came up and ate it. Oh, when he came loose, that was fun. Got the best of that one. That's for sure. Fish, nice. All right, I thought I'd try something new. The caddis, the caddis bite sort of died off and I think we're in, whoa, in the middle of getting some spruce some spruce moths to come. I can see them over here. So I put on a green bead-headed woolly bugger. I'm just swinging it through. Um, but the cool thing is, is um, I'll show you the technique I was using to slow it down because this is quite fast water. Uh, let me get deal with this fish first and then we can, uh, we can talk tech. Move them over here into the slower water here. Make it a little easier on both of us. I was hoping by switching over a woolly bugger too, maybe Maybe see some bigger fish. That's the best trout of the day so far. I like it. All right, let's take a look at what uh, technique I used to catch that uh, great little rainbow trout. Um, this is a significantly fast piece of the river and some people may go buy it. Um, I put a woolly bugger on because we're right in between, you know, the caddis fly and the, and the spruce moth um, hatch. So I wanted to prospect and see if I could pull something out of this. Um, but as I said, the water's quick. So if I was to just regularly swing it across, 
that fly in the speed of water would whip right across the, the river and it would fly by fish. And chances are they might chase it, but they're probably gonna miss it. So what, uh, what I'm doing is I'm casting 45 across and I'm putting a big upstream mend in it and following the line down on a tight line. And as the S curves in the line, I'm redoing that upstream mend and I'm pulling slowly on my own speed control that woolly bugger across all the current and all the seams within the river. That way, the fly is not ripping across, the fish get a chance to see it, you can even go left to complete the side of the river, and uh, you got a, you've got more of a chance to have the fly in the strike zone of the fish. So, once again, 45 across, big upstream mend, follow it down on a tight line. As your S curve happens, another upstream mend, as it comes across, as the S forms, keep it going right across, control your speed across the river, and you will present the fly in a slow enough manner that when these fish do eat, they've got a great chance of getting it out. It's a deadly technique. It works great. Oh, it's a nice one too. So when you're waiting for the hatches to change or for a hatch to go off, search. Use a search pattern, try to find out what they're eating. Because they're not only eating bugs, they'll eat terrest you know, high protein, high protein meals. Another very nice rainbow, fun. And there's the fly. Just a bead headed, green, woolly bugger. Olive woolly bugger. A little bit of flash, crystal bugger. Does a trick. Whoa! Gone. Quick release. Didn't get to show them to you. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Fish. Nice. Feels like a good one, too. Hopefully it's a brown. Stand down. Yes, it is a brown trout. Great. I didn't think we'd get a chance to dance with a brown today because of the high sun. But I managed to get one on, on the woolly bugger. This river is known for great brown trout and great rainbows. And I've been hoping, hoping, hoping that we could catch a brown trout out of here. And sure enough, here we go. And it hit just a big thud, just a thud. Nice, so good. Come on and take a look at this. Again on the woolly bugger. We're not seeing any heads, which is really weird. Should be going off. Could happen any time. So prospecting is fun. Well, that's a good one. Colored up. Come here, buddy. Nice. Yeah, beautiful rainbow trout.
RV living is a great way to see the area. You have the flexibility to travel where you want, when you want, and don't have to worry about leaving any of your gear behind. It's a fun and convenient way to explore. Not quite roughing it, and not quite five-star living, it's a nice balance of adventure allowing anglers to go at their own pace. The next morning, I meet up with Justin Severson from High Mountain Adventures in Island Park, Idaho. Justin, an avid fly angler, knows very well the area and literally moved here just for the fishing. This is Justin Severson. Justin and I met a little while ago here in Island Park, Idaho, and uh, we talked about going fishing. Well, it's happening, but this is unique. What's going on? We happen to have a couple razors conveniently <laughs> yeah. ready and waiting. We're going to go ahead and hit the trails, head maybe south of Highway 20 here, and. Uh, do a little rainbow trout fishing. Nice. On fly, dry fly fishing for rainbows. How's it been fishing so far? The fishing in Island Park is always good. Awesome. Um, but first of all, I guess I need a helmet, don't I? Let's do it. Okay. Yep. Let's go set up. All right, Mark, let's get you fitted with a helmet here. I think we got one big enough for that head. <laughs> it's a curse, man. How should it fit? Snug, but not overly tight. And I think that's perfect. Yeah, she's a go. That's all right? Yeah. Okay. So where we are, I've never fished. So I'm going prospecting. Justin tells me that the water is very sort of rapidy and very pockety. So we're gonna be doing a lot of that kind of style of fishing. Um, so I've got a big visual terrestrial tied onto a 4X leader with a 4X tippet dropper to a green bullet, a quill a Pertagon. Now the bead head on this Pertagon is quite large. It's a size uh, 16. Um, and I've got it that large because these pockets are deep and they're fast. So I want this bullet to get down as fast as possible. So we're gonna make our way down the trail and uh, see what we can do today. I'm really excited. This should be a blast. So what I'm doing is I'm starting, there's three different seams that are coming down off this pocket water. And I'm starting on the one nearest to me and letting it run through a couple times and I'll work my way out, work my way out into the money water. You don't want to go trouncing into water that might hold fish to get to the good stuff. So work your way out, take your time, have some fun. See what you can do. But he was right where he was supposed to be, right in the hydro cushion of that rock. Now in this river, there's only rainbows. And you can see the effectiveness of this Pertagon bullet. That wasn't three or four casts in and that little dude came up and smoked it. Nice little fish. 
Sí, Mari. All right, got one on the bullet. Out of that back eddy. Another little guy. I've raised a couple good fish on this pick dry, but I haven't been quick enough to land them. My fault, but they're eating it, which is nice. And I've got about a two and a half foot, two and a half foot uh, tag off this dry fly to the dropper. Lots of fun, these guys. Keep you busy all day long while you're searching for the big ones. Ah, little dude on the dry. That was awesome. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. But it shows you the attitude of these little rainbows to come up and eat like that. Came up and ate that big pink. Came clean out of the air for it, too. I think this one was born yesterday. Flies out. Good stuff. Nice. That was a nice fish. Hey, what's he doing there? Nice fish. It's funny, I was just saying to Justin that, you know, it always looks better on the other side of the river. <laughs> so I jumped on this flat rock and cast out, but this guy did not eat the water walker, he ate the bullet. And this is not by any means a big fish for this river, but on slow days, they pass the time because you know those big girls have to eat at some point. And it's a, it's a wonderful trout. I mean, it's a great little rainbow. Lightly colored, fat as all get out. And just 100% fun, really. This fish was right in front of that rock in the hydro cushion. And he came up and ate the ant sitting on that seam. And it's a beautiful trout. Nice. Yes. On slow days when you get a good one and you have to work for them, it makes these guys absolutely money. Oh, very cool. How do you like that? That's a beautiful fish. Good one, hey? Yeah. pocket water on the other side of the river is where this guy came from, came in, came up and ate that ant one more time. Just fantastic. This is a really, really juicy, juicy pool. And uh, I get off this rock. I got 4X on here, so I have to be careful with what I'm doing. What do you take, Mark? Do you want to help me? Sure. One, two, three. I just can't get him over. Nice. Awesome, awesome stuff. Thanks, Justin. It's another good fish, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it is. Man, I tell you, you got you to find those lesser spots, right? It's all this stuff across the river where these fish are coming from. No, they're a good one. Let's take a look. Oh, cannot complain about that at all. Super fun. Mm -hmm. 
So here's a setup for this uh, uh, big water walker that I caught that really nice rainbow on. I've got a seven foot leader that was 4X that's been cut down significantly so I can turn over this big fly. From there, there there's the fly. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a really nice big, big offering and it's really done well for me. From there onto the bend of the hook, I have probably two feet of 4X tippet material. And then on the bottom end, as my dropper, I've got another one of those brass headed uh, green quill bullets that, uh, that do really well in hoovering up smaller fish. But I think what happens is the, the, the fish come up and look at this and then they see the bullet on the way and they just decide to eat that for the smaller ones. The big ones are definitely taking the water walker on top. It's our final day fishing this area of Yellowstone Teton territory. Justin and I decide to hit a small river fed by a reservoir in the area on the make for cutthroat and brook trip. There he is! Yeah! Eight right here. How fun is that? I started out with a with a uh, a big game changer on, big white game changer, and had a bunch of fish follow, but just couldn't, they wouldn't commit to it. It was too big. So I switched to my five weight with a floating line with a bead headed wo woolly bugger on it. And this little dude came and ate it. So we're gonna get hybrids in here, chance of big brook trout, uh, maybe some purebred cuts. There's all kinds of good fish in, in this lake, in this little river. That's cutthroat. Is it? Yep. I uh, know it's a hybrid. Lots of them in here. Not too bad for the first cast with this new fly. Looks like uh, we solved the puzzle already, hey? That's very nice. Oops, there he goes. Gone. That's so great you can see that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <sighs> they were fighting over who was gonna eat it. Was there more than one? They were fighting over who was gonna eat that. <laughs> Another good one. Now I've got a 4X leader on here that's been cut back. So it's a little bit thicker, probably three or two now. And this black woolly bugger, you know, there's leeches in the system and uh, a beadhead woolly bugger allows it to sink a bit and it does, it emulates so many different things, whether it be a bait fish, a leech, crawfish, they really are wonderful. Oh, this is good cutthroat. Really, really wonderful, universal fly for multi-species. Another one, nice. Good fish. Thick fish, hey? Look at that. Yeah, that's a good one. That's great. So these fish seem to be down in, these, in this deeper section of this flow. And what I'm doing is I'm casting kind of, you know, at one o'clock and letting the current get put a belly in the line. 
and then uh, stripping it with long, steady strips. And these fish are just crushing it. And the nice little cutthroat. There he finally ate it. Well, first I was fishing a big black leech and then I changed up and put a Clouser minnow on. Is it a good one? Yeah, he's okay. You know what's funny is he was on that Clouser and then he came free from the Clouser and he had the leech in his mouth too. Oh, Reed took them both. That's pretty cool. Little piggy. Watch that rock. Woo, that's a beautiful fish, man. Yeah. That's all you. Just the old classic Clouser minnow. There he is. That's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. That's a really good one. Nice fish. Switched up again to a big Murdoch minnow. Where's my net? Here. And this guy came and just crushed it. Nice fish. This might be the fish of the day. So don't be afraid to throw big offerings for hybrids and cutthroat. So good. Show you this guy. Sometimes big fish do like big flies. Well, that's about all the time we have on this episode of The New Fly Fisher. What a great few days in Yellowstone Teton territory fishing small rivers and creeks. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. For more on our show, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. My name is Mark Melnick, and hopefully we'll see you soon in Yellowstone, Teton Territory. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone, Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,